Hi guys, welcome back to a dinosaur in the library. If you guys are still around, bless you. I know it's been a couple of weeks um, since I even posted that little quick vlog um, and I've been meaning to get back to making videos, but it's been a little rough and that's actually what I'm going to talk about today. So it's a weird angle and I'm sorry for that, but I'm in the middle of grading a whole bunch of stuff for the class I'm TAing for, so I'm just kind of doing this on the fly just so I can have um, a video to put up for you guys tomorrow. So um, what's been happening is this. So let me start over. So recently I've seen a couple of articles about anxiety and how that affects your reading and I was really excited to see those. If I can find the links I'll post them. Um, I think it was at Book Riot. I'm not positive but I will look. Um, and it, I was excited to see them because it's one of the, when you have anxiety a lot of things happen and you think okay I'm this happens only to me and in your head you know that's not really true but you feel like it is so I felt like you know my anxiety is causing me not to read and want to read or can't be able to concentrate on reading and it just it felt horrible and I'm like you know this doesn't happen to other people right but it does it does all these things happen to millions of people um, as I've said before I have OCD which is a form of anxiety disorder anxiety disorder can't talk today either and I also have general anxiety disorder well normally they're fairly okay you know they're they're pretty well under control even though I'm not on any medications for it or anything but the last few weeks um, the last week before the semester started and then the few weeks after that I've just been really um, I don't know my anxiety's been really high and I think it's just because I'm really stressed out I've got a lot going on with school and it's just a lot going on at once and I've got a lot of things do and a lot of things to do so I haven't been able to really um, get everything under control in my head and in reality I'm not behind I'm really not doing anything that's um, you know that you know I'm not slacking off or anything but I feel like I am because of the anxiety and the OCD and one thing I've done to hopefully combat this is I've gotten myself a brand new shiny uh, date book so I know this channel is about books and it's not about organizing or whatever but there's a lot of people on book on YouTube who do the planner reviews and things like that so I watched a bunch of them just because I really like planners and organizers I think it's probably part of my OCD I have calendars I have like three calendars in my house one in my little cube at work um, and I always have a date book for school so I looked at the reviews and I looked at some of the websites and I fiddled around with personalizing some of them you know like the Erin Condren and the plum paper and they're really pretty and I wanted a kind of pretty one because you know who doesn't want something pretty and shiny but they were really expensive too um the plum paper was cheaper than the Erin Condren but it was still a little higher than I wanted to pay plus it was going to take like a month to get here and I really 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 wanted to go ahead and get this done so I saw a review for the Uncalendar on a couple of people's channels but I think the one I really looked at was um, I think it's called Pretty Neat Living now. It used to be organized like Jen. And, um, this is the Uncalendar by People Systems. And it's, I won't go really deep into this because I don't know how much y'all really care about this. But this is how it's laid out. So, every, it's 52 weeks. And this side has, um, like a lined box here, a blank one here, a little graph one here, um, a couple of little colored ones here and then this side has your Monday through Sunday layout with another box for what needs to be done this week a couple of little other boxes I think they call these isolation boxes and then room to write the month and the year so this is one reason I got this is because you know I had to write in all the dates so you can start this whenever you want and I wanted to start this immediately so um Normally, I'm an extremely organized person, and I was always very organized, but when my anxiety and stress got the better of me, and I almost double scheduled something, and I freaked out. And I know that's nothing to freak out over, but anxiety makes you freak out over strange things, people. Um, if you don't have anxiety disorders, trust me, you will freak out over really weird things. So, I decided this would be the best idea. So, what I do on this side is I have color-coded, this week's a little messy try this week so I color code um, different things so these purple boxes are the classes that I am teaching assistant for um, the lecture and then the three sections of lab and then this is like an extra activity 
and the blue light blue uh, sort of electric blue it's the flare pens that um the flare um felt tip pens and i know a lot of people on booktube like pens and and uh things like that so these the um yeah there we go and it's upside down sorry paper mate flares right the little um felt tips and the bright blue color of that is um, are the classes that I'm actually taking. So this is my gender and education class, um, my weekly meeting with my major professor for prelim exam prep and our research collaboration, and then my pro seminar on Fridays. Um, and then Saturday and Sunday you can write, you know, however you want. But up here, you know, what needs to be done this week, a couple of things that are really important that need to be taken care of. Um, I've started since my wife, um, my wife is going to Aveda. I don't know if I've actually said that. Um, my wife started Aveda Cosmetology Institute back in May. It's a 13 month program and she's learning hair and nails and all this stuff. And she absolutely loves doing that sort of thing. She's always been really good at it. She was really good at it before she started. So she's going to be excellent. Um, but so Saturdays, she's there from nine, um, eight in the morning until seven at night. So what I've usually been doing is going on to campus and going up to my little cube in the doc office, doc student office, because we have access to the building, even when the building is locked um, and working. So I have point is I have a box up here for things that I absolutely have to take care of on Saturday when I'm in the office working. Then up here, this is for my pro seminar. This is stuff I didn't need to get done for that. This is this week for my education class. Next week for my education class, uh, my research club and prelim exam prep. And uh, this is the class that I'm TAing for. So things that I absolutely have to get done for this week, like printing the attendance sheets and grading assignments and things like that. Um, I've gotten... This semester is all blocked out, so I'm already prepared. You know, I've got things that I have to do but don't necessarily want to do and things that are fun and all these things blocked out just so I can look at a two-page spread, see every single thing that I need to get done in the next seven days and be a little calmer. And I've only had it, I got it last week. Um, not last weekend, but a couple of days before that. So it started with this past Monday and already this week I can tell a difference and I'm hoping, I don't like taking medications for it, but I'm probably going to end up back on them because my stress levels and my anxiety levels are really high, but I'm hoping that this is just one of those ebbing and flowing, wax again, waning sort of things that um, it will wane again soon because I feel much better when I'm able to read a little bit. As I've talked about before, I've tried to cram in um, some leisure reading in between all my classes and things like that to keep myself sane and I haven't been able to do that and I know that's exacerbating it. But my anxiety is so high I can't concentrate and I can't really focus on reading. So it's been a problem. So I didn't get nearly as much reading done during my break as I wanted. The entire last week of my break was just a wash. I didn't read anything. I didn't literally did not pick up a book, which just breaks my heart. I had so many books I wanted to read. Um, and I did a small haul at the end, very, very end of August, um, probably five or six books, um, I haven't done a video for it, but I mean, I bought five or six books thinking, you know, I, these are books that I really, really want to read and I've been really wanting. Maybe this will kickstart it and it just hasn't. Um, I'm having to read some graphic novels for my research collaboration, so that's helping a little bit. Um, I am getting a little bit of reading in that doesn't feel like um, assignment reading. It feels like fun reading because we're doing um, something with LGBTQ graphic novels right now. So I've read over the last few, um, over the last couple months, we were reading uh, Drama by Raina Telgemeier and Stuck Rubber Baby by Howard Cruz and Fun Home by Allison Bagdell, all of which I've read before. Um, the next one we're doing is Skim, whose author I cannot remember right now. I'm terribly sorry. And then the next one is Calling Dr. Laura, um, who I think the last name is George with an S, but... Um, we've got a bunch more that we're going to do, so hopefully I'll get to talk a little bit about that when we get a little further into the research once we actually have it um, solidified and things like that. But I did want to show today one of my favorite things in the entire world used to be comics, and I haven't had time to read them 
or graphic novels much at all. But our comic shop that we used all the time closed because the owner um, suddenly passed away. And it was, it was awful. I mean, he has a small, he has a young daughter and um, he was a really awesome person. He made comics really fun. And he always had a unicorn party where nobody was allowed in but girls. And was celebrating women in comics. And it was a really fun time. And he's just, he was just a really good and cool person. Um, but when he died, the shop just shut down. And there are two or three others in this town, but we really never used them. We really liked that one. And today, um, it reopens. Someone has purchased it and is reopening it. And I went to the grand opening today, got a free cake pop. Free cake pops are never a bad thing. And I did pick up two things. I couldn't pick up a lot because I just don't have the money right now. But I picked up a couple of things. Um, they've done a Jim Henson's The Storyteller uh, Witches. Um, it's a very short series. I'm not sure if they're going to do multiple titles within the Storyteller. This one is book one of four. Um, and I know the fourth one is already out, but this is a back issue and I wanted to read them in order, of course. So I got this. And then I also picked this up, which I've been really wanting to read for a very long time. And I did not realize it was hardback and that it was absolutely gorgeous. And this is Hopeless Maine. Personal Demons, which is volume one, I hope. Oh, God. Did I buy the wrong one? I hope I bought the right one. Okay, I think I did. I'm going to have to look that up. Because I, I think I bought the right one. I really hope. <laughs> Sorry, guys. feeling a little concerned now. But anyway, Hopeless Maine. I'm um, going to read the back. It says, Welcome to Hopeless Maine. On the isolated, windswept island of Hopeless Maine, a young witch finds an abandoned girl named Salamandra in a gothic house. Salamandra doesn't want to talk about what happened to her parents. She doesn't want to live in the orphanage either, but there isn't much choice. Growing up with ghosts, strange creatures, and horrible children would be hard enough work for anyone, but there are also the demons to contend with. Salamandra isn't so sure if she really is an orphan. She hopes, though, the alternative would be far worse. And this is by Archaea. Archaea. This is the publisher. And the authors are Tim and Nemu Brown. And the artwork is just gorgeous. I mean, it is just a beautiful, beautifully illustrated book. And I can't wait to read this at some point soon, hopefully. And, yeah. So, I've had this on my radar for a while, and I've just now gotten around to it. Just because I saw it on the shelf, and I really wanted to purchase something from their brand new shop today. So, I got those. Um, I got some cupcakes from my very favorite cupcake shop in the entire world. And that's the Cake Shop in Tallahassee, Florida. If you're ever in Tallahassee, you should go to the Cake Shop. Get their vanilla buttercream filled cupcake. It'll change your world. Top One of my top five favorite things in the entire universe are buttercream filled vanilla cupcakes from the cake shop. <laughs> so I went over there today and picked up some for my birthday because today is my birthday. Um, I'm 36 this year. So I went and picked up some and I get over there and they're buy one get one free today. The universe wanted me to have cupcakes. Clearly wanted me to have cupcakes. So I bought more than I had intended. I bought double the amount I had intended because they were so cheap. Um, and I took some to lunch. I had lunch with my wife. She's in school today, unfortunately, but I went and had lunch with my wife and a couple of our friends that go to school with her and took cupcakes to that. And then I have cupcakes in my kitchen waiting on me. I might have to have another one tonight while I'm grading. I think I'll reward myself after the next 20 students. But as you can tell, I'm feeling a little better today. It's actually been a pretty good day. Um, so here's hoping that I'll have some more good days and that I'll be able to get some more content up because I really, really love BookTube. I really enjoy making the videos. And even if only like four people, including my wife and two people I know um, in real life at school watch these, I don't care. I really enjoy talking, putting my thoughts out there, and I'm hoping maybe somebody gets something out of it. Maybe one of you finds a book that you haven't ever heard of and want to read. And I think I've rambled on pretty much long enough, so I'm going to stop here. And no promises, but I'm going to try to get some extra content up in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm definitely going to do a haul and show the books that I got the end of last month. And um, I'm going to definitely do a week. Um, OCD Awareness Week is coming up pretty soon. So I'm going to do... Um, I don't own any of the books that I really want to talk about anymore, unfortunately. I'll have to just... Um, 
maybe try to put pictures up, which I'm terrible at, or just talk about them and list them below. Um, and then I'm also going to do a video for Band Books Week, which is coming up soon, which is like library Christmas. I mean, not in like the joyful sense, but it's one of those things that librarians freaking love. It is our time to tell the world, you know, and I love Band Books Week. I hate that it has to exist but I absolutely love it. Um, I love being able to talk about banned books and talk about how books get challenged and explain the problems with that um, with people to people who may or may not know. So I'm looking forward to making that video. So I'm hoping making some of these new videos and things like this is going to help me dig my way out of my anxiety. And I hope that everybody out there has been having a wonderful September and August and that you're finding awesome and wonderful books to make you happy, happy, happy. And if I could share my cupcakes with all of you, I would, but I can't. I'm very sorry. Um, if I can figure out that We'll have to see if we can figure that out. Some kind of Harry Potter kind of magic thing because I'm pretty sure they wouldn't hold up under shipping very well. But I love you all and thank you for watching and thank you for sticking around and I will see you soon. Bye.